when you're just trying to get home and then your truck decides that it wants to bust a coolant line. It's always a good way to start a Friday morning. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be working on the Yukon because the coolant connector, the plastic connector that tees off the coolant to go to the rear unit line broke off. So I figured, hey, while I'm in here, why not just replace all the coolant stuff? Okay. From my understanding, getting those clips off or pushing them down and getting them off of the metal tube and out and off of the uh, heater core seems to be a big headache so what you have to do which if you're watching these videos because you probably need to do this is that they have these two clips right here and you're supposed to snake your hand in there and push these clips and when you push the clips down you can see that the groove in the inside moves up to allow it to disconnect itself off of the little clip that's on the metal line. And the same thing for this one. You wanna get in there, push them down, raise up, and then pull off. I watched one video and dude did it real easy. I watched another video and the guy said that he was messing with it for two hours to get one off. So I'm gonna take the quick one and average it out with a two hour one and I'm going to say it's going to take me an hour to get it off. Getting those uh, coolant connectors off, coolant adapters, that seems to be the hardest part. The only other issue you may have is your clamps may not be reusable and then you can just go get just the universal uh, worm clamps, the ones that you screw and they tighten. But that seems to be the only issue because it's not a whole lot of room back there, number one. And then it seems like it's not really like a good place to really grab them. So let's get to it. So remember, the black connector goes on the left, the white connector goes on the right. Evidently, there's an angle difference uh, on the connector, which is why they have two different color connectors. It seems to be like an angle difference on the black part that goes to the to the rear cooling system. So black on the left, white on the right. How long I've been struggling? Nine minutes already. Hey. You take your bed off. It's coming in here and throwing and breaking shit until you get it off. You can't get your hand in there. Don't you slide back on there, you motherfucker. <laughs> Ugh. 
<clears throat> Jesus Christ. Where is it supposed to go to get off? I know what this slide back on there. Oh, I know what this slide back on there. How is it supposed to come off? No, 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 no. Don't slide your ass back down. Hose. Hold on. What broke? That bitch right there ain't moving. So the T itself didn't break. The connector on the hose is what broke. So hold on. Yeah, so the actual coolant connector, the connector itself didn't break. The fitting on the holes broke. Huh. So that took 24 minutes <clears throat> of cussing, prying, and whatever to get both of these off. 24 minutes. I don't know if that's a record, but <clears throat> I'm claiming. I probably fast forwarded a, a bunch of that, so y'all have to sit there. Y'all can watch 14 seconds instead of 24 minutes of me struggling. So the white one that goes on the right, and then we got the left one. So. I'm going to want to go ahead and replace this, like it's a 16 year old plastic. The hoses feel fine, but you know, if one plastic piece broke, that means the rest, you know, probably aren't way too far behind. And the upper and lower radiator hose, the lower hose, back on, I didn't put the stock clamp back on it. I put one of the work clamps on it, it was a butt, there's a pain in the butt to get to. Had to take the air box out. So now I'm going to disconnect. Um, the connectors from the water pump and it's basically to disconnect them uh reseat them back on there and then run the lines uh, to the connectors port white port single port black port <laughs> And the outlets are two different sizes. This outlet is smaller. This outlet or inlet or port or whatever is bigger. So it's kind of hard to switch up which ones goes where. The single hose has the smaller port on it. So this one won't fit on that one because this outlet is almost the size of the outer diameter of this small hose. has this funky little clip thing on it which I guess I just pull it and I guess when I pull it it comes off and it tightens up that's gonna be my guess never seen anything like oh yeah two connections one goes to the reservoir here and then the second one goes to the white on the firewall so I took the connector off of the adapter I put it into the hose and I had to apply a good amount of force I don't know if I would have wanted to have to apply that much force with this already connected to the firewall but it, it was a pretty good amount of force um, to get this to slide on so it's a good tight fit now word of the wise connect the coolant line the heater hose up to the adapter before you attach the adapter to 
the auxiliary and the heater core because it takes a good amount of force to get that to seat and it has to be in a very specific position and I just don't feel right pushing it on the firewall I feel like something else is going to break so clip it on here and then attach the auxiliary bottom hose and then to the heater core in the uh, in the firewall in the deck everything's hooked up put back together hopefully tight enough hopefully everything is clamped down I'm going to put the first gallon of concentrate in here then I'm going to do a gallon of water and then I'm going to take the other half gallon of concentrate pour it in there and then pour half a gallon on top of those then I have two gallons of premix alright so I have the first two gallons in there uh, let's turn it on and let's start the bleeding process And you just want to keep adding antifreeze in the reservoir. Uh, so right now, right now the reservoir is full, but more than likely, as soon as it comes up to temp and the uh, thermostat opens up, it's going to take in a big old gulp of uh, of water, of antifreeze, of coolant. So this is just a game of letting it come up to temp. And then it's gonna take a big old gurp as it as it burps out of it big air bubble. So just stay handy, stay ready. Antifreeze. Make sure nothing is catching on fire. That's just antifreeze burning off. And just make sure you don't hear uh, any any leaks. Make sure everything is nice and dry because antifreeze is the is the blood in the, of your vehicle. Make sure it has antifreeze. So I'm gonna sit here and let it do its thing. And once it finishes burping, we and it comes to the temp, we should be good to go.